This video will be a third example for how to compute the term symbols of an atom given a specific electron configuration. And in this example, we'll look at what to do in the case of having multiple partially filled subshells. So we're going to start off with our beryllium atom. In the ground state, beryllium would be 1s2, 2s2 for its four electrons. But that would just be a singlet S0. So let's look at the case of an excited state beryllium where we have 1s2, 2s1, 3p1. All right, so how many determinants or how many distinct ways will we have of arranging our electrons inside these partially filled subshells? So the number of determinants, if we just had this subshell, would be 2 choose 1, 2 spin orbitals in the s subshell, 1 orbital with spin up and spin down. And if we just had this one, there would be 6. 3 orbitals in the p subshell, 3 spatial orbitals with 2 spin orbitals each, spin up and spin down for 6 total. That would be 6 choose 1. So when we have multiple un partially filled subshells, we just multiply those numbers together. We have 2 choose 1 times 6 choose 1. That's 2 factorial over 1 factorial times 2 minus 1 factorial, or 2 over 1 times 1, which is 2. And we have 6 factorial over 1 factorial times 6 minus 1 factorial, or 720 over 1 times 120, or 6. 2 times 6 equals 12. So there are 12 distinct configurations for our electron within uh, this given uh, atomic configuration. So we're going to draw those out there. So you'll notice here that we have each of these is repeated. So we have the six possible ways of arranging this one electron inside of our 3p subshell. And then for our one given state in the s subshell. Then our second possible state in the 2s subshell for the same repeated six configurations in the 2p. So really you're just combining all possible states by multiplying these numbers together. So we're repeating the configuration while the other one is making all of its choices. Once we've done that, once we've drawn out the diagram, the algorithm is exactly the same as before. So once you've generated all the different ways of arranging the electrons, you just proceed as normal. So if you had three or four or how, who knows how many partially, uh, partially filled subshells, you would just repeat this uh, until your hand got very tired drawing out all those determinants. All right, so we need to calculate our values of M sub capital L and M sub capital S. For M sub capital L, we sum up the value of M sub little l for each electron in each orbital. So uh, L little l for S is L equals 0, so M sub S equals 0. For P, it's L equals 1, so M sub L equals 1, 0, and minus 1. So we add those up, 0 plus 1, 0 plus 1, 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 0 minus 1, 0 minus 1, and then repeat for the second shell, or for the second case. Uh, M sub capital S is the sum of M sub S for each electron. Uh, a spin up electron is plus 1 half, a spin down electron is minus 1 half. So we have 1 half plus 1 half is 1, 1 half minus 1 half is 0, etc., etc., minus one half plus one half is zero, minus one half minus one half is minus one, et cetera, et cetera, until we have all 12 for both values. Now we look what's the maximum value of M sub L that we have. In this case, it's one. What's the maximum value of M sub S we have? It's also one. So the possible term symbols go from our maximum M sub L all the way down to zero. So we can go one or zero, P or S. For possible values of s, those go from our maximum m sub s all the way down to 0, so we have 1 or a 0. Or for 2s plus 1, our multiplicity, we have a singlet or a triplet. So now I'm going to make a table which has all the, which has how many of each of these combinations of m sub l and m sub s, how many determinants have those combinations. So for plus 1 plus 1, we have 1. For plus 1, 0, we have 2, so there's 1, let 
let's see, there's one and there's one. For plus one, minus one, we have one, which, let's see, right there. So etc. filling out all nine values for our 12 determinants. Now I'm going to list my term symbols in decreasing order of L in the outer loop and decreasing order of S in the inner loop. You can reverse which one is outer and, and inner. Just make sure that they're both descending as you go. So we'll start with triplet P. Triplet P has a value of L equals 1, S equals 1. So max M sub L equals 1, max M sub S equals 1. So is there a value of 1, 1 in my table? Yes, there is. So for triplet P, M sub L goes from plus L to minus L. M sub S goes from plus S to minus S. So for M sub L, we need plus 1, 0, and minus 1. For M sub S, we need plus 1, 0, and minus 1. And we need all combinations of all three values. So there are 2L plus 1 values of M sub L, 2L plus, 2S plus 1 values of M sub S. So the number of determinants that belong to a term symbol is going to be 2S plus 1 times 2L plus 1, or 9 total values. Those values will be in a, arranged in a square from max M sub L, M sub S to minimum M sub L, M sub S, from plus 1, plus 1 to minus 1, minus 1. So inside of this square, do we see a non-zero value at every possible uh, value of M sub L and M sub S? And indeed we do. Every value is greater than 0. So we can subtract that square out and assign those determinants as belonging to a triplet P. So if we subtract out a 1 from this entire square, what we're left with is this square here. So do we have another triplet P? Well, we no longer have a value of plus 1 plus 1, so no, we don't. Do we have a singlet P? Singlet P looking for L equals 1, S equals 0. So do we have that case for, let's see, L equals 1, see, m sub l equals 1, m sub s equals 0. Do we have that? Yes, we do. So we need three determinants. 2l plus 1 times 2s plus 1 is 3. We need values of plus 1, 0, and minus 1 of m sub l, and 0 for m sub s. Do we have those? Yes, we do. All three values in that square are there. They're non-zero. So we can subtract out those three, assign them as belonging to a singlet p, and what's left is just a square of zeros. So there are no term symbols left to assign, so there are no more singlet P's, no triplet S's, no singlet S's. So our only term symbols are, are triplet P and singlet P. For singlet P, the only value of J is 1, J going from L plus S to L minus S, L equals 1, S equals 0. For triplet P, S equals 1, so we have values of L of 1 plus 1 down to 1 minus 1. So we have triplet P2, triplet P1, triplet P0, and singlet P1 for our term symbols of this excited state beryllium atom.